Leah Katz Nelson is an Emmy nominee for Fleischman is in Trouble. Other projects have included 21 Drum Street, Little Voice, and White House Plumbers. Uh, Leah, Leah, Leah congrats, congratulations on your Emmy nomination. I wanted to ask you just first the general pr- approach to the show, which is obviously a contemporary show, but set in a very recent specific time period uh, in the recent past. And I guess how you kind of like grappled with that, with the costumes and how it would look. Um, thank you. First of all, I'm really excited and proud of our team. It, it's, it was a very exciting moment to be nominated. Um, and I'm really proud of the department. Um, you know, the, the show spans from 1986 to 2016, with 2016 being our present day. And while we were in production, we were still, you know, in the COVID um, restrictive period of production. So it was complex to be telling a story that was, you know, pre-COVID and um, very much focused around the election and what New York and kind of the feeling of that summer was like in 2016. Um, So it's contemporary, but there is, you know, it is a period in and of itself. Um, So we really did spend a lot of energy taking time to carefully extract the, the fashion trends and key um, clothing shapes and silhouettes that would be um, particular and specific to 2016, one of which was, you know, the workout wear that the women wear at the 92nd Street Y, and it's kind of woven throughout the story, but a lot of that kind of um, leisure wear becoming more present in everyday attire was something we kind of infiltrated. Uh, You know, there's a certain wealthy echelon you know the upper middle class that is heavily featured in our project and so paying attention to what designers were presenting of the moment in 2016 also and making sure that everything felt very au courant for those characters to help really land us in that period yeah it, it's a it's a great job i wanted to ask you obviously you're you're not nominated for for uh, me time which is a fantastic episode uh really focused on claire danes as rachel and I, I first like when we first meet her obviously and, and she's at like a a low point certainly in her her life I guess how did you kind of you know think about how she should look there and like how that distress she should look in her clothes and then yeah like I'd love to start there and then I have a couple other questions about just her whole it's a great episode and she looks it's an incredible transformation I guess for for Claire but I guess starting there but what, what were your thoughts well you know I think one of the the real secrets to contemporary costumes, which sometimes gets overlooked because we're all real people wearing clothes today, is that you know you really do want to just seamlessly believe these characters in their environment in the story. You know, certainly if there's a moment that fashion is important to the storytelling, then the focus should be pulled in that direction. But it was really important that we told a very authentic a realistic version of what a woman in the postpartum period would resemble. Um, you know, I'm the mother of two. Uh, I'm also a birth doula. I've spent a lot of time in that universe. And it was important for us to really keep it grounded. Um, you know, she certainly, Claire, in that moment, Rachel Fleischman was not in the headspace of presenting herself to the world at all. She was very much moving inwards and um, days sort of morph together, you know, newborn period, it's very fluid. So creating a sort of a solitary singular uniform that she donned every day, sometimes maybe with there would be layers that would kind of come off and come back on again, but there was a real um, naturalistic and rumpled quality to, to that moment for her. And I think choosing colors in the palette that were really, um, not as um were, that were effective in making her feel tired and drained you know we pulled in yellows and grays things in her that helped to um you know accentuate undertones of her skin that would really help things feel sallow and and sad you know for, for that reason with with Rachel obviously too she's like she so wants you know she wants to be in that world right and I guess like she's very incredibly trying hard to be in that world so in the scenes where she is like you know bef- like obviously the show like you said jumps around in time when she's like at a a, like in a high moment or whatever it is I guess like were you like I guess were you how were you trying to replicate the try hard like what you were saying about the intense wealth maybe of the area right like she's like trying to fit in there 
And like, maybe I guess when you were thinking of the, are you trying to think of it like that nuance where you're like, what would a person really trying here do versus a person who is just like naturally, you know, used to this kind of wealth that they're, you know, experiencing every day? I, you know, with Rachel's character, I leaned really heavily into the idea that there's a practicality to everything that she does. There is, it's a very calculated, systematic climb that she has with her career and her clothes mirrored that structure. There was always architecture, very um, specific, you know, uh, tailoring. Um, we kept the palette fairly monochromatic. Um, prints were very limited. Um, there was, you know, a real um, sophisticated elegance for her um, that felt moneyed, but never shouted brands. You know, some of the world that she moved in were a lot more sort of in your face in terms of the, the branding and the designers that we chose to feature on those characters. And for Rachel, we kept things more understated, but clearly, um, you know, with a sense of, uh, she knew how to put herself together just so and and right. always feeling like she was in the power position right with her i mean not uh, not that it's only just about rachel but because uh, i do love this show but i guess just like uh, working with claire i guess I, how how did you guys discuss this character because it is a, a character i think who obviously you know we don't get the full picture of her until this episode really is, is like towards the end of the series so i guess how did you kind of talk about and work with her to like build her character throughout the whole series you know, we started from a place um, as mothers, to be honest, you know, really talking about what that was like being a parent, um, the evolution of your child's growth. And as they get bigger and you can have more time to lend yourself to be focused in your career. Um, and also as New Yorkers, you know, what does New York, how is that represented in your clothing and your choices? You know, there's a lot of walking in New York. Footwear is important. Um, but there are women that wear heels everywhere and that's part of their sort of power move. Um, you know, we talked about the idea that she was not coming from affluence, that money came to her later in life. So the choices that you would make, um, that she was not someone who necessarily innately understood fashion, but understood what was classic money mm -hmm. and that she would lean in that direction in terms of the choices that she would make. I, I wanted to ask a little about uh, Jesse and, and his character and how you kind of dressed him and certainly thought thought of his character like, you know, pre-divorce and then like post-divorce and how his fashion sense maybe changed or maybe not at all because like guys maybe don't really think about this or not as as cognizant on it as you could tell from my, my certainly my wardrobe just in general, I guess, how'd you kind of think about him and like talk about it with Jesse, I guess as well. So with Jesse, you know, that we didn't really create a huge arc for him in terms of the way that he dressed in the three week span of, of where our story largely sits. Um, in flashback, we, we chose to tell um, the sense that Rachel was buying his clothes, that she was picking things out that were presentable for the social world that she was trying to navigate them through. When we meet him in our sort of present day story of summer, you know, we wanted him to feel um, like the weather was oppressive. And so, you know, he's in this, in the hospital a lot of the time. So there's obviously the element of wearing his, you know, scrubs and lab coat and that kind of thing. But um, he's always in sneakers. You know, he's not somebody who spends energy putting himself together with the exception of when he does go on a couple of his dates, you know, he puts on, um, you know, a blazer over a slightly more rumpled shirt. Like he is making an effort. He doesn't quite get there. He's new to this, this scene. Um, I think he moves in a world of comfort and that is first and foremost in the choices that he makes. Um, it's like he has a lot of nice things that Rachel bought for him or told him he should have, or his assistant, you know, her assistant purchased and dropped off at their old apartment, but they're all kind of rumpled and they're, you know, he's no longer bringing things to the dry cleaner. He's doing it in the laundry in the basement of his apartment building. So, you know, things have a more lived in quality for Jesse's character. Yeah, I, I love that attention to detail. And I think that's permeates through the whole show and certainly your work here as an Emmy nominee. Leah Katz-Nelson, thank you so much uh, for doing this. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks.